F41 Silk Shark is just an amazing paper airplane that isn't that hard to fold and flies over 100 feet. I am absolutely in love with this shark-like fin, which is of course where it gets its name. And you can see that it looks great when you're using even just a regular sheet of paper. It even locks together in this three-dimensional shape. But as I do, I have designed a template for this plane. So if you support me on patreon.com slash foldable flight, you can download and print off this template to fold a paper airplane that looks like this rather than using just a regular sheet of paper. And not just that, but you gain access to actually over 70 templates now for just $4 a month. So be sure to head over there and check that out. And with all of that out of the way, let's see this plane in flight and then I'll teach you how to fold it. All you'll need in order to fold this paper airplane is a square sheet of paper. If you happen to only have rectangular paper on hand, you can really easily convert it by taking the top edge to a side edge and then just cutting off that excess paper. So a wide range of thicknesses works well with this plane. I'm using Kami here, which is quite thin, but you could use something up to 24 pounds or 90 GSM if you want this to fly really, really far. And with that, we're going to begin with the paper in this orientation with the colored side up and you're going to be folding, you can see, from corner to corner on a diagonal, which means you're taking this corner to this corner here, just like so. And when you end up opening it back up, you will open it up so that the point that was at the top stays at the top and you have the white side up now. And now I'm going to fold this point to my top point and just make a little pinch crease right in the middle, right like that. And then I'll open it up and I'm going to take this corner to that pinch crease, just like so, make another pinch crease, let it open. And now take the top point to your bottom pinch crease and this time you will crease all the way across the paper. Okay, so your paper should look like this. And you're now going to fold this edge here into the center, but you're going to leave a slight gap just a couple millimeters. And honestly, the thicker your paper is, the wider you're going to want that gap to be. So here with Kami paper, two millimeters is probably more than enough. Uh, with something like 24 pound paper, you might want that to be just a little wider, though two millimeters is, is fairly generous. So that might be good enough for you anyways. So you can see your paper will now look like this. And you're now going to fold this edge here to this inner edge, not to the center crease. Again, you're going to this edge. And I like to hold this layer down as I do that to really control it. Line that up nicely. And crease just like so. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And at this point, we're going to open up the last few steps here. So unfold all the way back out to this orientation. And I want you to notice this most outer diagonal crease. We're looking at where that crease intersects this edge right here. And I'm going to fold this edge to that point. So you can see I'm landing this corner actually right on that intersection I mentioned. And this edge here along that back edge of the paper just like so. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm going to fold this edge in to that crease right there, the 45 degree angle. And I'm going to leave just like a one millimeter gap, a really narrow gap between my edge and that crease. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, and now I'm going to fold this point here up to the top of the plane. And fold in on the existing creases here and here. And fold in one more time on our existing creases. Okay, so now 
I'm gonna rotate it into this position and let you notice. See this corner right here where this layer is basically hitting the center crease? I want to pay attention to right where that is. And I'm going to start a crease that starts right at the same point as that. And my crease is going to go down to this corner right here. Okay, and once I do one side, I'm gonna fold the other side exactly the same way. Okay, and now you can see we're getting those wings to flare out and that's really nice. And the idea is we're going to open this left side up and work on the right side. I basically want to place a crease that's running right along this edge here. And I do that by pulling right on it and I'm only creasing right to the center point. So I'm just pulling those layers down. I wanna go right to that corner and crease to the center point. And now when I close up my left side again, if I control all my layers nicely, I can, with my left hand, kind of push on that center crease and help it reverse as I close up the plane. And I like doing it this way because now I can perfectly match this side to the first side. I'm actually making a new crease as I do this now, right along the spine. And I think that's a nice way to do jet folds. Okay, so the plane looks like this. And now I'm going to fold a tail by reaching into this pocket, reversing the center crease and pulling this forward. And you can see as I pull forward, that point of inflection is kind of moving forward with it. And basically I want to position this so that this front edge of the tail is perpendicular to the bottom edge of the fuselage and that I'm pulling it all the way tight to these corners back here. And that's kind of how you determine how far forward to pull this. So you can see it doesn't have to be perfect. That's just a general reference. And obviously the tail won't be staying in this position, but that position is what we need for the next step. Okay, so in order to prep for the next step, I'm going to reach into this pocket of the tail and I'm going to pull it right along this edge of the fuselage just like so, and place a crease in, on the tail right along that edge. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm going to go ahead and make this next crease and then explain it after I make the crease. So the way that I determined exactly how to make this crease, basically I pulled this side until the back edge of what is going to be the fin is perpendicular to this bottom edge. And once that happens, once I move that, well, you can see this is at this slope. Once I move it into a vertical position, that's when I place a crease on this layer. Then I'm going to hold it like that, flip it over, and do the same exact thing on the other side now, just making this side match the first side. Okay. And now I'm going to take this point here and fold it right to this point, this intersection of that edge and this edge here. And I'm not creasing all the way. I'm just making a little reference point on the back edge of the fin. And now we're about to do a swivel fold. So first I need to prepare by folding this edge to that edge. Right like so. And now I want to crease from this point where that crease hits this edge to this point right here. Highlight that for you. That point right there on the fin that is kind of the halfway point. So I'm creasing from this point to that point, pulling that open, making that crease. And you'll see as I do that, I have to actually, there was this crease right there, that little short one, that's gonna get moved. You're not actually going to use that crease you're gonna make a new one right next to it. Okay, and once you do one side, you can flip it over, 
fold this edge to that edge right there. And then I don't have it marked on this side as visibly, but you're just folding from that point to that same middle point. And of course you want this to be symmetrical to your other side. So really just using whatever you ended up with on the first side as your guide for this side is always the best solution. Okay, so now we just want to put this layer right here on the inside of the fin. And in order to do that, I need to reverse this crease and put it back inside the fin like so. I can close that side up. I'll do the same thing over here. Just reversing that crease, not making any new creases and allowing it to close up just like that. Okay. I'll rotate it into this position here, and I'm just pulling this flap now down, kind of at its natural breaking point, which should be right along this edge here. And then I can open up that fuselage and tuck the excess paper here inside, making a new crease. Right like that, and close it all up, and that's going to lock that side together. And I'll do the same thing here. So I open that up at its natural breaking point, open up the fuselage, tuck this in, making a new crease, close it all up. And now our plane is locked together really nicely. So all that's left to do here is we're opening up the wings right along that bottom edge of the fuselage. There's one side, do the same thing on the other side. And now you can see the wings will bulge a bit you can fix that by kind of setting them. Imagine my hand is the edge of a table. You can set the wing right at the edge of the table and brush out that excess paper and really smooth the wings out that way. Obviously, I can't really do that on camera here, but know that you can do that to help smooth your wings out. And the last thing is, if you would like these, rather than coming to a point to be truncated, you can truncate the wings just by folding a little corner making this crease parallel to the bottom edge of the fuselage, and then inside reverse folding that little corner you folded, and you can see that truncates the wing if you prefer that aesthetic. It's not important at all. It doesn't improve the flight. It's just a slightly different aesthetic if you like it, and of course you can do that on both sides. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you have a lot of luck flying this plane. As always, I'll see you next time.